One of my all-time favorite things is medieval themed art. Now I say medieval themed instead of medieval art because they're kind of two separate things. Uh, but there are there are two artists that I, I just absolutely love, and I kind of actually collect their work. I have replicas of them as well as I collect images online that I can high resolution of their work. Uh, the first one is probably my all time favorite artist, uh, Frederick Burton, who did the Meeting on the Turret Stairs, which uh, will be a whole other video in the future, I'm sure. Uh, and the other one, who is the subject of today's video, is Edmund Blair Layton. Now, Layton's work is is wildly famous in terms of medieval art. I think everyone has seen his art, even if they didn't even realize it was his. And I use his art in a lot of things. I have a replica of his painting, The Accolade, in the background of almost every single sword review I've done. Uh, but I really wanted to speak to the themes of chivalric ideas, as well as romantic ideas, the, the romance of the Middle Ages, as depicted in his art. We are actually going to take a look at four of Leighton's paintings. Now, he's done a lot more than that, uh, some of which are even medieval themed, but there are four that I really wanted to speak to uh, because they represent my favorite of his work. Now, we're going to start with what is essentially his most famous painting, at least that I'm aware of. I don't know of any of his that are actually more well-known than this one, and that is the Accolade. Now, this has been reproduced uh, many different ways, many different times, it's been done as a statue that you could buy. Uh, it's very, very iconic. Uh, one of the things, though, that I really love about Leighton's work is not so much what is overtly obvious, but the aspects of the art that are less than noticeable. Uh, so I'm not going to speak a lot to the aesthetics of the art because I, I think you can really see that just in looking at it. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to speak to kind of the background to the story that's being told in the art. So, an accolade is the knighting ceremony. And while what is being depicted here is, is most definitely a more romanticized and fantastic version of an accolade ceremony, i.e. with a princess or a queen doing the knighting instead of a king, uh, it, it, it is uh, perfectly valid. It, it was a thing that had been done. However, what I find to be very interesting about this painting is uh, what's essentially a very subtle detail, and that is right here uh, on the back of this knight and on his shield. That's his crest. Now, I have a chainmail heraldry banner that I made for myself. Uh, it's kind of a, a cross between some things that I really like, as well as, uh, well, my actual family crest, as it were. Uh, in the combination of those things, I actually did use... Uh, this knight's crest from Leighton's painting. Uh, it's actually kind of a Germanic eagle, uh, but I actually used it as more of an Italian eagle, speaking of my heritage there. But what I find really interesting in this painting is actually the, the crescent moon. Now, if you don't know a lot about heraldry and the, the symbols that are used in heraldry, a crescent moon actually represents a second-born sun. What actually makes this notable from a historical standpoint, and I will actually assume that Leighton knew this going into it, is that the second born was very rarely going to ever be knighted. Uh, even in a noble house, what would be more likely to happen is the second born son would very often go into the church. They would become part of the clergy or, the, or become a monk. And so what we actually have here is not only the knighting ceremony, of a person who obviously did great deeds, but actually broke outside of the confines of the expectations of the time, and actually became worthy of knighthood despite his birth. And I think that's a very interesting thing uh, for me because I am actually the second born son uh, in my family. I have an older brother, and if I were to have been born in the Middle Ages, it might have been very likely that I would have been in the clergy However, this painting kind of throws out there, kind of gives me hope that maybe there was a little something else as well that I could have uh, attained. Uh, and so, ultimately, when you look at the painting of the whole, yes, it is a, well, it's a very beautiful painting. It's very invocative. But it also has that little detail that makes it that much more poignant. The next painting we're going to look at is entitled Godspeed. And this is a depiction of a soldier or knight heading out into battle 
and leaving behind his lady. Now, we know this because she's tying off her garter or a handkerchief of sorts uh, to his arm as a favor. Now, having a lady's favor is, is something that, again, is very invocative of chivalric ideas, very invocative of concepts that came from Arthurian legends. And I, again, I believe that Leighton knew very well what he was doing here. Uh, now, this is, this is a very common thing. I think uh, most people are well aware of uh, the concept of, of having a lady's favor. But uh, what's also poignant about this painting is the concept that this might be the last time that she will see this man. Uh, and it's, it's throwing out the more romantic ideas, uh, not so much in the adventurous romanticism, but rather the, uh, the love uh, form of romanticism. And it's, it's, it's kind of a bittersweet concept because... As you'll see in the next couple of paintings, this is something that Leighton actually returns to uh, really quite often, is the concept of wondering if uh, you will ever see the return of a loved one. Although this is Leighton's uh, probably second most famous painting, it isn't all that high on my list in terms of uh, favorites, but I do think it's a really good jumping off point for the next two. Uh, that will actually lead up to one of my favorite of his paintings that is almost completely unknown. And actually, the next two paintings are ones that uh, it's quite possible the viewers of this video will have never seen before. And so we come to a painting that is entitled An Arrival. Now, unfortunately, I could not find a good high-resolution version of this painting. I think it's because it's actually in private hands, and so there aren't uh, many uh, good pictures that have been taken or good scans have been taken. There's not a lot in terms of reproductions out there. So unfortunately, this is the best image I could find, but it, it's more than enough. What I find most invocative about this painting is actually uh, if you pair it with uh, the very last painting that we'll look at, and I'll speak to that in a moment. So I'm showing you this one first because the concept of this painting is that this lady is standing on the, the ramparts of a castle wall and she's looking down at people who are arriving. And so you look at the, the painting Godspeed and you have this concept that she's sending someone off to war. Well, here now we have a lady who is waiting for someone to come back. And it's, it's, le it's left as a cliffhanger of sorts. You're, you're always wondering, what is she seeing? Is she seeing... Uh, a small army defeated coming back? Is it a triumphant army? Is it the person that she sent away? Is he coming back? Or is he being carried back on a cart? It's one of those things that you just don't know and that's, that's part of what makes this one really stand out. I really wish that there was a higher resolution version of this image available because I do think it is one of his better pieces of art in the scene that it's capturing, the concept of it. And I really wanted to highlight this one because I feel it leads up into the next piece of art we're going to take a look at uh, very nicely, and that is this one. This is entitled The Shadow. Now, I've actually had the opportunity to see this painting in person. Uh, it is owned by the Berman World History Museum in Alabama. Uh, so it's about an hour and a half drive from where I live, maybe a two-hour drive. And uh, it's a very interesting museum, it has a lot of different uh, arms and armor and weapons and firearms from throughout the ages. But they also have this painting. And uh, this is probably, when I saw it, it was immediately, it became my favorite Leighton painting. So although I really do love the accolade, this one very quickly became the topmost. So I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, background on this, uh, thanks to information that uh, is given by uh, the Berman World History Museum. Now I'm going to read this little snippet of text about the shadow. It says, The shadow is based upon the Greek myth of Debutades, a Corinthian girl who drew the portrait of her beloved on the wall of her bedchamber by tracing the outline of his shadow cast by the lamplight on the night before he departed for war. Leighton changed this setting for the drama to the battlements of a medieval castle, below which the young crusader's ships are waiting. Now again, this is uh, keying in on the concepts of sending someone away to war and never knowing if they're going to return. And when you think about uh, the painting and arrival, it's actually kind of interesting that the lady in both these paintings looks very similar. 
And I almost kind of wonder if there isn't a little bit of a Leighton telling a larger story here. Because if you look at the battlements on both of these paintings side by side, you'll see they're actually very, very similar. And it kind of makes me wonder if just off to the side of the painting and arrival, just off here to the right, is there not a shadow that's been drawn on the wall? I like to think so. And I think that that is, is one of the reasons that I really like Leighton's work is because he tells stories that can be combined uh, in his paintings. Uh, you can almost have two of them side by side and begin to, to develop uh, a narrative, which I think is very interesting. Looking at the details of this painting, specifically that there is a ship waiting in the background, there is a sense of urgency here that this is going to be uh, a rather quick last farewell. And that kind of romance in the sense of both adventurism as well as uh, just the simple concept of love is something that I think is uh, very, very well portrayed in these paintings. And it's what, in my opinion, has made Leighton a truly a master artist, especially when it comes to medieval themed art. And he chose the Middle Ages to do a lot of different settings for his art. And I think that's because the, the concepts of chivalry and the concepts of romance, again, both love and adventure, is something that is so very much tied to the Middle Ages. I think the shadow really represents uh, what I believe to be Leighton's true masterpiece. A lot of people might, might say that it's the accolade, but I really do think that it is this piece of art. It is by far my favorite of his, and it's so close. It's so close to, to being on the same level as Frederick Burton's Meeting on the Turret Stairs in terms of just invoking all the imagery that I, I really love to kind of think of when I think of the Middle Ages, uh, the more noble aspects. And reading, finally, just kind of to close out this video, uh, reading about Leighton, and how he paints. Um, I will speak finally to just uh, what is said, again, a, a, a little snippet. It says, The poignancy of the moment captured in Edmund Blair Layton's painting, The Shadow, is immediately apparent. A knight in full chainmail stands in profile before a castle wall, absolutely still and unhurried, while his beloved traces the shadow he casts with a piece of charcoal vine. The presence of a ship in the harbor, though distant, creates a sense of impending departure, likely to battle, and gives significance to her drawing as possibly the only remembrance she will have of him for some time to come. Leighton was, and is, known for his romantic, noble subject matter in period pieces that often displayed couples in significant moments in their lives. The knighting ceremony of the accolade, the well wishes and hopes for safe return in Godspeed, waiting for a lost loved one to come back to you as in an arrival, and the capture of remembrance in the shadow. It is paintings such as these that truly make Edmund Blair Layton a master artist.